What's up guys, Soul here, and I thought it would be pretty fun to list my top 5 favorite fairy tale girls, even though if you're already subscribed to my channel, I guarantee you know number one. But maybe, just maybe, I can surprise you with a few others. I can only imagine everyone already commenting, so and so is best girl. So we're taking this to the best anime app, Anime Amino, where you can vote on your favorite. Follow me there and go cast your vote. Links are in the description. For the best anime of winter 2016, we had over a thousand people vote in the first day alone. So this poll is going to be epic too. Too. And this time I'll be giving away the very special Fairy Girls manga on the app as well. More on that later in the video, but you guys will get all the details. For now, let's find out which girl is coming in at number 5. Now, the rest of these were pretty easy picks for me, but number 5 was definitely the hardest choice because both of these girls have such amazing backstories. It was between Yukino and Ultir, and in the end I had to go with Yukino because I guess I have a soft spot for Celestial Spirit Mages. I mean, Ultir had a very, very interesting change of heart when she left Grimoire Heart, and I love her backstory as Ur's daughter that obviously plays a huge role in Grey's story as well. <laughs> I've even posted my own artwork of her. Her character design is obviously gorgeous, though it would have been nice to see her story go even deeper with Grey, and I didn't like the way things ended up for her. Sacrificing everything, that was such a sad ending. As for Yukino, I couldn't help but feel for her in the Grand Magic games. After Sabretooth's Guildmaster forced her to strip in front of everyone, removed her guild mark, I had always wished she would become great friends with Lucy and join Fairy Tail and find a real home, but even though she didn't join them, that moment was one of the most shocking and cruel moments in Fairy Tail history. Maybe not as far as when Kyoka tortured Urza, but still, shocking and the way she handled that situation afterwards kind of uncovered the beginning of her character. I also love how angry Natsu got after hearing about what happened. His attitude towards vulnerable girls couldn't be more respectable. I didn't like Yukino working with Arcadios because I found him so annoying, but her combining magic with Lucy is so cool in the anime. I'm happy she ends up with a new Sabretooth again. She was by far one of the best parts of the Grand Magic games, and then a big part in the Celestial Spirit arc as well. Even now we saw her recently in the manga, and I think she will be very important as the story progresses. Next is your favorite bartender, Mira Jane, who poses as the beautiful model for Sorcerer Magazine and is so sweet to everyone, but also a little demonic, literally. I don't know if you guys remember, but before the whole Isana fiasco, Mira Jane wasn't so sweet and was kind of a rebel wearing gothic stuff, always butting heads with Urza. But then after we find out about everything she went through with Lisana's apparent death, behind her cheerful appearance and smiles, there were scars and pain, which we've moved past now, but at the time made her absolutely one of my favorite characters. I remember those scenes where they held Lisana's funeral and everything. I just think that kind of broke her and drove her to put on that face for everyone. And just being honest with you guys, I've been able to read most people very well. And I've been close to girls like this. I feel that for a lot of people who are just constantly happy and smiling, there's something deeper behind those smiles, especially if they're just sweet or nice all the time and to everyone. And those scars, 
that they're hiding from the rest of the world, it makes them who they are and it makes them stronger. I think that really drew me to Lisa on his character. Hero had a very good idea behind her. Plus, I mean, come on, she's gorgeous, and after we see Satan's soul for the first time, she's totally badass too. A character I think most everyone has loved since the beginning. <laughs> You know, it's actually been so long since I first saw Juvia in the anime, I don't even remember exactly what I first thought of her. I do remember before Gruvia was even a thing, like when they had first started fighting, I was like, okay, the Ice Mage has to end up with this rain girl. I remember her being very intriguing and mysterious, a very mysterious character with her Phantom World introduction. I like how she's progressed from all that sadness that we first saw to finding real friends. And really, when you think about it, that's a big part of what Fairy Tale is for a lot of characters. I think it's safe to say that without Juvia's love for Grey, Fairy Tale just wouldn't be the same. She's hilarious. I love her character design and different outfits even more as the show goes on. <laughs> I think there have definitely been some times when Juvia has proved herself. She had some pretty standout moments in the Tenro Island dark with Mel the Ultier and Grey. Sensory Link was pretty intense, but currently in the anime with this next arc after Fairy Tail Zero, things will get really serious with Juvia, and the anime might not portray that as maturely as the manga did, but still some really good content revolving around Juvia and Grey is coming. The last thing we saw was Grey crying just falling into Juvia's chest after she killed a certain person. It was so dramatic, and I love where things go next. Their relationship goes even deeper. Just how much she's grown throughout the series, how Lucy and everyone is hilariously her love rival. All around, a beautiful and funny fairy girl. Now, you can't have a top 5 fairy girls without the badass Titania. 1. Urza is fierce, she will destroy anyone. 2. Urza's fucking gorgeous, no one can deny that. The bust, the brains, the brawn, Urza has it all. Wait, wait up, let's backtrack a second. Maybe not the brains. But that's exactly what makes Urza's character so amazing. The countless moments of Urza answering questions seriously because she doesn't quite understand social situations has given me some of the best laughs in all of Fairy Tale. <laughs> Urza's awkwardness is completely hilarious. As Lucy described her in the past, she's cool and beautiful, warm and full of passion, but she's also hilarious because there's so many times when she just has no idea what's going on. So yes, Urza has all these amazing qualities that make you love her from day one, whether it's because you think she's the strongest or has the hottest character design or the most badass armor, or even because you think she's the funniest. But what makes her have such a deep character? In my opinion, definitely her childhood. We learn about Urza's dark past, being an orphan, being tortured in the Tower of Heaven, seeing herself as weak and helpless. But then we see her grow into Fairy Tail's queen, seemingly the strict iron fist of the guild because she wants to protect all of her friends. However, we know she doesn't feel confident without her armor, even as we've seen recently in the anime, being stripped and tortured by Kyoka, embarrassed, humiliated. This really mentally affects Urza, and it's the struggle that she continues to overcome, which makes her such an amazing character to watch and connect with. Coming from Urza's passive anxiety and fearfulness to being so comfortable and happy around her friends, so much so that she'll walk around wearing nothing in fairy tale, she has this charm that makes you always want to root for her and there's only one person she becomes so nervous around and that's Jalal. You've all seen this very recently in the Christmas special I talked about. 
Gray basically wins a bet and tells her to walk home in the snow wearing absolutely nothing, which she gladly does. She takes off her clothes and leaves. But it just so happens that Jalal sees her outside, making her so embarrassed and she gets so cute. So we get to see another rare, slightly romantic, shy side to Urza that makes her all the more lovable on top of her beauty and badassery already. Also, I've had people ask me what's my favorite Urza armor. I think it's between Japanese cloth, Flame Empress, and Nakagami, possibly Armadura, but there's just so many. What about you guys? <laughs> I know by now I shouldn't even have to tell you guys, my precious Luchan, the most beautiful princess in all of Fior, the main character alongside Natsu, Nalu is winning. If you don't like Lucy, I don't know what to tell you. Oh wait, yeah I do. Get out. I've loved Lucy Hartfilia since day one, the story of a girl who's run away from home after her mother's death to join a group of misfits on the adventures of life. I think Lucy has one of the most beautifully aesthetic character designs of any anime character ever, not just in the manga and the anime, but in Hiro Mashima's personal artwork as well. I ranted about this on Twitter a while ago. What I love about Lucy is that she's found a home not as a princess, not as royalty, but as a normal girl overcoming the death of her mother and her broken home. And she fights amongst her friends as a symbol of beauty, emotion, and benevolence. She's not trying to overcome the same weakness that Urza has always been trying to overcome. She's not a warrior. She's not emotionally dealing with those issues. She's emotionally dealing with these family issues, the passing of her mother and her father, and she's growing up at her own pace. Do I want to see her be ridiculously strong or overpowered for no reason? Not at all. If you want that, then I really don't think you understand what Hiro Mashima is doing with this character. <laughs> Lucy's growing at the pace she does and accomplishing what she can as a normal girl. She has flaws and weaknesses that make her relatable. Hiro Mashima has stated that he gave more of his personal qualities to her than any other character. She has Natsu and all of these friends to help her and protect her, and that's why the story is so centered around her and Natsu. Fairy Tale is about the fun, adventure, and growth of these characters, and for me, that's exactly why Lucy is my favorite. <laughs> I love her adventures with Natsu, I love her connection to the celestial spirit world and her mother, and especially during the time fairy tale disbands, which just recently happened in the anime, I love her passion and desire to hold on to her family while also growing on her own. <laughs> She's the connection to the audience while Natsu's making irrational decisions, Gray's taking off his clothes, Juvia's hysterically crying, and Urza's dealing with all of them and also being ridiculous. Lucy's the girl we get to experience all of it through. We get to step back and look through her eyes at all these amazing characters. I even think she's a huge connection to the mind of Hiro Mashima, and for that reason she's the essence of Fairy Tale's friendship. And finally, she's the most gorgeous girl in Fairy Tale. <laughs> Those are my top five, and I also have a few other favorites that may be lesser known, but before I tell you guys, Tell me your top 5 in the comments and go vote for your favorite on the best social networking anime app, Anime Amino. The links to download and my profile, everything will be in the description. Last time, we did the best anime of winter 2016. Over 2,000 of you guys voted, and we had Erased, Boku Dake Ga Yunai Maichi coming in first, Fairy Tale Zero in second, and Musagen No Colors Phantom World in third. 
three of my favorites this season, and if you're fairy tale fans, that speaks volumes to how amazing Erased and the other anime are. You can check out that video on my channel for some new anime, but go follow me and vote for your favorite fairy girls on Anime Amino. I'll be announcing the winning girls that you voted for in the next video as well. I'll also make a post titled Fairy Girls Giveaway on my Amino profile to win this awesome official manga by Boku. All you have to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel, be following me on Anime Amino, and leave a comment about your favorite fairy girl on that Amino post. Everyone who leaves a comment on that Anime Amino post will be entered in the giveaway. All the details will be in that post. As I was saying before, there are so many amazing fairy tale girls beyond just five. I of course love Lucy's mother, Layla Hartphilia, and the huge story developing around her right now in the manga. Kagura from Mermaid Heel, and all of her interactions with Urza. The first guild master, Mavis, we're seeing her backstory right now in Fairy Tale Zero, which I absolutely love. Kinana, formerly of the Orison Sace as Cubelios, who eventually joins Fairy Tale and helps out Mira Jane. Laki Orieta, who I wish would have a bigger part in Fairy Tale. Levy being a genius, and Kana with all of her drinking antics. Now in the manga we have Brandish, Damadia, and Anna who are looking to be very interesting. There are some I don't like as well, like Minerva with what she's done in the past and just her overall design. Wendy has annoyed me since the beginning, getting in the way of Nalu adventures ever since she joined, but her Dragon Force is pretty badass, I'll give her that. In general, some other villains I don't really care for, but that's pretty much it. Again, make sure you guys follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Anime Amino. Drop a like for all the amazing fairy girls and whoever you like best. Tell me your favorites, and thank you so much for watching. Arigatou gozaimasu. Jane. <laughs>